Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about geodesic domes. I finally got my three frequency when assembled. I, I've only assembled it one other time, and as you can see, it's a little bit big, so I don't assemble it very often. The reason I've got these two domes assembled is because we're getting ready to build one for humans, and that's going to be a lot of fun, probably out of conduit or something like that. But backing up and talking a little bit more about geodesics, of course, the whole thing is based on a sphere. And the idea is to break that sphere up into straight sections so that it can be made more easily and yet still be extremely strong and be a fairly close approximation of a sphere. My two frequency dome, which thousands of you have loved, is sitting over there and you can see how much smaller it is than the three frequency dome sitting here. The, str the maximum strut lengths are each about a foot long, but you can see when you add one frequency, not only do I get something that's slightly more spherical, but it also gets much, much bigger because now I have one extra strut. And as you go up in frequencies, you add an additional strut each time, but you also add a massive amount of complexity as far as the numbers of struts you need and the number of joints. So if you need to make special connections, your three, four, five, and six way connection, or not three, four, five, and six way connections, you need an awful lot of them. And so lower frequency domes, like the two frequency here in the background, are much, much easier to build. And that's probably what we're gonna end up building out of conduit, is a two frequency dome. But anyway, back to the theory. You have a sphere, and what you wanna do is break it up into struts. Well, if you put points on the sphere, the simplest three-dimensional shape that you can use to break up a sphere is a tetrahedron. You use three-sided figures, which are triangles, and you put each of their points on the sphere. You have a four-sided figure made up of three-sided shapes. But as you see, this tetrahedron really isn't all that useful. It, you really wouldn't want to be, it's not very volumetrically efficient like a sphere is with its surface area. So you can add an extra side and make it a four-sided shape and break up your sphere that way. Well, of course, that gets you a cube. You're all familiar with that. But then again, it's just a cube. That's not very fun at all. And it doesn't look anything like a sphere. So you can upgrade to a five-sided shape. And now you can see here we have this icosahedron, which is really starting to look, I mean, it's basically a soccer, soccer balls are a little bit different, but we're now getting to the point where it looks more like a sphere. And the geodesic domes are basically based on this basic shape. You can see we have pentagons that touch all the way around. There are 20 pentagons that make up this icosahedron and they all touch, and that's what this and this are based on. Now, of course, you can, once you have this icosahedron, this is where your frequencies come from. The number of divisions between pentagon points, the centers of your pentagons, is what determines the frequency of your dome. For this three frequency, for instance, you can see that I have a pentagon here, or maybe if you guys can see it better, there's a pentagon here, they have, they're the pink ones, the pentagon here, and there's a pentagon at my apex. From the center of this pentagon to the center of that pentagon, I have one, two, three segments. That's a three frequency dome. For this one back here, the two frequency, you can see maybe that I have a pentagon here and a pentagon here, and between their centers, I only have two spokes. So that's what determines the frequency of your dome. Now, both of these are class one domes, Class two domes are slightly different and they have a lot more different complicated strut. Anyway, check out this diagram. This is what a class two looks like. These are all class ones, which is the classic dome that you're thinking of. But an interesting thing to note here about three free, any, actually any odd frequency dome is that they don't quite divide evenly and they don't set entirely level like the even frequency domes do. If you notice here along the bottom, every other point is hovering slightly above the ground. That's because it's not perfectly flat because if you'll notice, you can probably see that this is slightly more than a hemisphere. The center of this icosahedral shape is actually right through here, through the center of this lower segment. I could have built it, of course, at this point and stopped it, but then it would have been less than half. It would have been slightly smaller and I think less cool. So I went slightly over halfway, and you have to do that. You either need to go slightly under or slightly over halfway with the odd frequency domes, unless you want to build some sort of like custom struts along the midsection here. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video, you're almost always 
constrained by your maximum strut length, PVC conduit tubes are sold in certain lengths. Ideally, you wouldn't want to have to cut them, so 10 feet. Now, 10 feet is not end to end, it's node to node. So you have to shorten that so you don't get a 10 foot node to node distance because you have to leave some material at the end unless you're using some sort of custom connector that plugs into the end of your tube, in which case all that matters is the node to node distance. Um, I've got a table here that shows you the different strut factors that I did in Excel for the various things. Twos and threes, I wouldn't want to build beyond a four frequency dome. And uh, here's, a, here's some diagrams that I'll throw up on screen to show you how they actually go together. But it's conceptually, think of it this way. You're building a bunch of pentagons in both cases. Your pentagons, the short struts are your A struts. They are surrounded by B struts. All your pentagons in both cases get the B struts around them. Then whatever's left over, you connect with your C struts. There are no C struts on the two frequency, only on the three. So you hear you're building pentagons, surrounding them with the B struts, and then you're building hexagons out of your C struts, and they're also getting B borders. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier, because this diagram here is a little bit confusing, but if you think of building pentagons and hexagons, alternating them, and surrounding them with the B struts, with their borders, you shouldn't have any trouble. And that'll help you kind of double check to make sure that you get it put together right. But with three guys, this took us maybe 10 or 15 minutes to assemble. Of course, if it were full size for humans, it would take a little longer and you'd probably need some sort of an aerial lift. But they had an awful lot of fun. It's been hanging from that hook on the ceiling here for the last day, but I brought it down so that it could actually fit in the frame. But that's kind of a little bit more about geodesics. It's an awful lot of fun and it's it's just really, really cool. Everyone that sees these too, and they're just paper. Everyone that sees them sitting out here just says how awesome it is. So I definitely encourage you guys to go experiment with geodesic domes as well. Now, if you haven't seen my first video about how to actually roll the paper and assemble it, go check that out. There's a link right there. I'm sure I'm gonna do another video about geodesics soon because they're just so much fun. I hope this helps get you started. It's an awful lot of fun. You can definitely do it yourself. Just don't be afraid to try. But go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.